Hello, and thanks for tuning into Taste Radio, the number one podcast for anyone building a business in food or beverage. I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of Taste Radio, and with my co-host for this episode, John Craven, Jackie Brugliera, and Mike Schneider. I love how Nate always does this. Every time I start <laughs> screaming into the microphone, he runs away. Doing the intro, he comes and closes the door to the studio. He's like, I can't stand the sound of that guy's voice. <laughs> I get under a table. Every week. Yes. Every week, I start screaming and he comes and closes the door. He scurries into the catacombs. <laughs> yes. No, he's doing a great job. We love Nate. He's running the AV, making sure that everything's working, that we all look as good as we can possibly look and sound as possible sound as good as we can possibly sound <laughs> that's about it right there <laughs> they're gonna edit that <laughs> that was a microcosm no we're not yeah that's yeah exactly exactly well welcome back john welcome back mike yes i almost forgot your name yeah i know <laughs> yeah, who are, it's like who are these people yeah. here it is yeah. <laughs> numpty I, mike i see your t-shirt says uh you that it looks like oh, I see you my, got that t-shirt in puerto rico is that right i'm yeah i got this uh 413 is the road to rincon that goes through rincon it's so Rincon nice. is a town? Rincon is a surf town in Puerto Rico. Yeah. You went, I, you went surfing? That is where I went. Nice. I surfed, drank as much Caribe kombucha as I could. This stuff's really good. <laughs> really good. I thought and, you were going to uh, say you drank as many cocktails, as, and then I paused and yeah. realized that you weren't no. not drinking that many cocktails. No, I was basically, I was too busy surfing with the turtles. <clears throat> what? Nice. Sea turtles. Yeah, they There's pop turtles, their heads like up big turtles? Your, yeah, there's hawkbill turtles in Puerto Rico, and they just they pop their heads up while you're surfing. Okay, chill. Yeah, they're awesome. So all the cocktails you didn't drink, John, I assume you had a few for Mike. He did on on his behalf. <laughs> I saw. Uh, I had a few. Yeah, you were in Mexico. <laughs> I was in Mexico, but in there's Cabo. A, there's the war on sugar in Mexico. So mm-hmm. uh, there is. Yeah, basically every margarita is like a skinny margarita now. Is this true? I, it seemed to largely be true. There's giant warnings on like soda and stuff down there really? i like that yeah nice. mm-hmm. but uh i basically uh existed on ceviche okay <laughs> as you should did you find the garbage can of ceviche you've been dreaming about uh no i saw a uh a ceviche bar though it's kind of ceviche master <laughs> yeah i'm curious about this so like you would see a warning label on a can of soda like you would on a pack of cigarettes here no they have um i don't i'm not totally up on the specific but they have these like high calorie um i think it's a high sugar warning too it's like these mm-hmm. black oh God, i see I don't know. yeah e- excesso calories yes excesso as a azucares i am azucares. fluent yeah i'm fluent I, in spanish that's as you can read tell. spanish yes. there it's interesting how like even i mean beyond packaged you know beverages there's still even with a mixed cocktail which you're not really privy to what's going in there they're still it's <laughs> trying to kill the the sugar. sugar yeah <laughs> well, it's, it's important i mean i think uh i wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some momentum for something like that here in the states but um well i don't know if big food would allow that to happen <laughs> someday there was a time when people thought big tobacco wouldn't allow those kinds of things and now you see like you know a terrible person like, a, a lung oh my gosh like those like literally black lungs mm-hmm. on on cigarette packs in Europe, yeah. um, for sure you see those. But I, it's time for a Ray rant. Come on, Are you yeah, right? Yeah, right. Come on. No, okay? no, this no, is no, your no. chance. I think I, I think I made a mistake this morning because I, I wanted to, a little bit of Zen. So I, I saw this bottle of Ohm, uh, gently Zen on my desk, and Ohm is a maker of mushroom superfood supplements, uh-huh. and uh, this one. Uh, is made with ashwagandha and GABA, powered by reishi, though. Because yeah. normally you'd be like, big food, right, sugar, right. children, they shouldn't be eating any of this. That's exactly what I sound like, too. And, and, then, <laughs> and then he bust out a package of chocolate cake. Never going to let that down. <laughs> and then I uh, I had my caplets, my, my caplets of Om Zen. And you're chill a now? swig. Yeah, what'd you put in there, booze? No, a swig of coffee. Coffee? No, so I... I <laughs> I know, I'm not sure what I did to myself Who here. takes pills with coffee? I don't know. This was a huge mistake. A huge mistake. I think your brain's currently calibrating. You know, you got the caffeine and the zen, and it's trying to figure out what to do right now. Conflicting um, drugs in his system. I also got a, my, my liter of green juice. You love that stuff. It's not, you know, like liter of cola. Like, that's what it is in, uh, what's the name of that movie? Liter of cola? Yeah, liter of cola. Oh, my goodness. How are we? Super troopers. No idea. Oh, super troopers. 
So I don't remember that one. Not not sure. I, I made don't it through remember that. that one verbatim. Right? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Ray. It's, that's not a verbatim. That's a very <laughs> famous quote from that movie. Oh my gosh. Sorry, Ray. It's not a good, not a good movie. movie. Anyway. Okay. You know what? People people it. are going to send you an email. That's fine. And lots of people. That's fine. All right. Let's talk about the wine in Mexico. You told me that uh, you almost spent three hundred dollars on a bottle of ten dollar wine. Is this true? Uh, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I think he and said someone he could have. That's what they call a leading statement in question. I said I witnessed some tourists spending $300 for, uh, wine labels like La Crema, uh, <laughs> Justin, um, now, now to be fair, those are fine bottles of wine. They're just not $300. I mean, if they're like 10 bucks and you're at a gas yeah. station, $10 bottles you know. of come wine. on, <laughs> gas station. No, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you find in like a wine shop in Vermont to put on your table. You know, it's like $15, $12. Why Vermont? That's just where I find it. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's weird. But uh, yeah, Mexico has some pretty pretty solid wine. I got mm-hmm. uh, a bunch from this uh, winery that uh, last summer when I uh, took a trip with uh, Jackie down to Mexico, we went to one called Casa Magoni, which is like pretty uh, pretty solid stuff and relatively widely available in Cabo too. So enjoyed that. It was only, I think, 50 bucks, so. Yeah, I recall you guys talking about the wine scene in Mexico and how it is up and coming, uh, and which is really cool to see. You wouldn't think in that kind of climate, I'm making big assumptions here, but I'm, I'm assuming where you were was pretty warm, that you yes. could grow good grapes, mm-hmm. good wine grapes out there. Uh, yeah, there's some different climates down there, so. Okay. Not an expert on it, but. I mean, Mexico City is like a mile high city. So there, there's definitely elevation in Mexico. I, I've, get, get I've never been. Higher, get, get higher up. No? No. And in wine country, like in the, the um, what is it called? In Valle de Guadalupe, like there's a lot of valleys and things. So similar to, you know, Sonoma where there's some cooler climates, even though it's like a hot area. Um, yeah. So they, they grow like a variety of grapes. And even in San Diego, a lot of restaurants are serving a lot of wines from Valle now it's trendy and it's new and a lot of like new winemakers coming onto the scene well guess what i'm gonna be in your neck of the woods later this week jackie and i'm gonna have to find myself some mexican wine yeah if only you're here longer i could take you to mexico oh man i was thinking about doing that because i'm gonna be in la next week and i'm gonna be in san diego later this week and so i said okay well why don't you a normal person would say i'm just gonna stay for the Weekend, you know. Ray is such a jet setter. I'm going to be in LA. I'm going to be in San Diego. I was just in Barcelona. I'm I, mean, I mean, you know, this is all this is all work related. If I were if I were a real jet setter, I would be in LA and you San You are the Diego. Taylor Swift of food and beverage. Yeah. We need a BevNet private jet for Ray. BevJet. 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 <laughs> all right. Anyway. We do have the idea for the beverage copter, which I think is, it, that's ahead in the queue, isn't Be- it? Beverage copter gets you nowhere, though. Yeah, it's true, but. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't go cross country in the beverage cop- no, copter. No, that would be a rough trip. I demand, <laughs> I demand a BevJet. Right, let's start with, let's, let's start with an iPad. I need, can, I, can I get an iPad? You got an yes. iPad. I got <laughs> one waiting for you. Yes, okay, we got good. you an iPad. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike mentioned Vermont. And of course, Vermont is famous for. Many things. Skiing, cheese, Skiing, maple, cheese syrup. Maple, maple syrup. Maple syrup. It's also Plink. it's also famous for a very well known spirit brand. That spirit brand <gasps> is Whistle Whistle Pig. Pig. No, no, no. Yeah. Whistle Pig. Whistle. Are you whistling whistle. a little when you yes. talk about it? Correct. Is it correct. Whistle Pig? <laughs> uh, John has at his side a bottle of a very limited edition whiskey that was recently launched. I don't even know if it's been announced, but it was recently launched by Whistle Pig, um, which is uh, called, drum roll please. Say it, Ray. Oh, God. It is called Badonkadonk, Whistle Pig Badonkadonk. Now, for those of you who <laughs> don't know what a Badonkadonk is, um, I'm going to get fired if I say it, so Jackie you probably should say it. Okay, go ahead, say it. So Urban Dictionary's definition <laughs> is buttocks of exceptional quality and bounce doesn't david chappelle say it's junk in the trunk <laughs> yes <laughs> i believe he goes by dave but yes <laughs> david, mr david, mr. Chappelle. david My, chappelle i don't know him so i can't i don't this think i'm allowed to enough. call him you, dave okay fair enough fair enough yes uh exceptional bounce i, I <laughs> Nice. Okay. So I wonder if this just bounces on the tongue, you know? Like Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great You know what? I'm gonna hide behind no this. No one nobody ever thought Badonkadonk would be written in such a font either. It's amazing. I look at I, this font. I mean this box is like 
Yeah, so it's heavy. Does it have any okay. badonka donk to it? We, we should we should kind of uh, describe this for people who are not watching the video. This bottle comes in a very heavy uh, wooden crate, which opens up in the front, and it says "Whistle Pig, age twenty five" on the, the the little door handle, mm -hmm. which opens up this, <laughs> uh, this 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 crate. John is pouring some out right now. The uh, yeah, you don't. What's the uh, retail price of a bottle of this, Ray? Well, hold on now. Okay, let's, all right, I want to know. Let's lay it out here. All right. So this is a si small batch pot still single malt whiskey. This pours about a hundred dollars. That'll put it in perspective. Okay. Finished in silver oak Cabernet barrels. Silver oak is the name of a uh, esteemed mm. winery. All right. Yes. All right. Let's drink this. So the the retail price <laughs> on this uh, bottle is one thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Wow. Okay. Well, cheers. I just love that it's like such a fancy expensive product with such a fun name they're just like kind of making fun of the fact that it's super expensive agreed yeah i mean it's um very nice i probably should not have had some of my own mushroom caplets and uh some coffee before you guys this box is 200 dollars. i know send the box back don't you know this keeping thing's that. awesome i'm not keeping the box don't oh jesus don't nuke my bottle don't, here don't break the box okay it doesn't well, this even, is, uh, I mean, it doesn't even slide. You basically need, you need to be a bodybuilder to lift that. You box. need a forklift. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Very, but this stuff is uh, exceptional. Uh, I actually sat down with two of the key leaders of Whistle Pig in an episode of Taste Radio published in July of last year. Those folks are Liz Rhodes and Megan in Ireland, who are the head of whiskey development and chief blender, respectively, for Whistle Pig. Um, really interesting conversation talking about how they are leading the brand forward uh, amid just different trends and changes in the world of spirits. So uh, also really cool to see two women leading this brand or, or part of the leadership team of Whistle Pig as well. So definitely. Yeah. Exciting stuff for the brand. Mike, I know that uh, you've you know, going on vacation, it, you, know, you, you got to get back into the swing of things. Yeah, got to get back. Got to get your immune system back into gear. If only there was something that could get my immune system back into gear, Ray. Do you have a suggestion? I do have a suggestion. What is it? It's Amuse. Amuse, mm. of course. I-M-M-U-S-E. Amuse is a dietary and food ingredient clinically shown to stimulate immune function at the cellular level. Amuse is the primary sponsor of today's episode of Taste Radio. And if you incorporate Amuse into your innovation strategy, you will help your consumers optimize their health throughout the year. Learn more at AmuseHealth.com. That's I-M-M-U-S-E Health.com. Pretty impressive. You got through that after all that whistle pig. It just broke. I did not <laughs> have more than it just like basically co coated my palate. Well, this is going to boost my immunity right here. Okay. So. <laughs> it's going to kill all the germs in your mouth. Yes. What do you have? You have a magazine in front of? What is I, I've got more. It's more like a coffee table book. It's <laughs> it's it's by the um it's by our our, our dear friend Mike Lee. Who can I can I pause for a second? I I said, do people still read magazines? You know what's kind of funny though? That we have a magazine. No, yeah. that we, we we have a magazine. No, we have a magazine, but people love the magazine. They do. People like our subscriber our subscription rate keeps going up and up and up. And people are like, I, I want to be in the magazine, the magazine, the magazine, the magazine. It's like if you see your name in print, you see your brand's name in print. Somehow it's just like you've made it. Do you know you can get the magazine for free? You can just go to bevnet.com. All this time I've been paying magazine. for it. 13 years I've been paying for the magazine. <laughs> this is we, crazy. We, we've been docking his pay for well, since you we'll, started here. We'll send it to you. Just go to this go to the website, sign up for the magazine. Bevnet.com slash magazine. 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 Made it really simple. It's super easy. Also in the magazine, I'm sure we're going to be letting people know that registration for BevNet Live is ending. Early registration. Early, early, registration. early not yeah. registration. Not, not early. Early. No, it's going to sell out anyway, but I mean, early, excuse me, early registration. Can you let a professional handle this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie? <laughs> it's a whistle pig striking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, it's the damn is, whistle pig. This yeah. is early, early registration weekend is ending and Jackie has literally <laughs> begun every meeting that I've been in with her, which has been a lot <laughs> with, hey everybody, early registration. <laughs> It's like I'll a holiday you, for us, you know? <laughs> when is early registration ending, Jackie? It's ending this Friday, which at the time of this recording, well, by the time people listen to this, it will be today. So it's ending today, but I'm known to be a little bit lazy. Oh my God, you guys. I forget to close it down. So if you're listening to this, you need a little extra time. You got the weekend. You guys, there's like two 
<laughs> times of year that Jackie gets like ridiculously lazy. We're like, damn it, midnight at f- on Friday, this thing closes down. Jackie, you got this? Yep, I got it, Mike. I got it. I fall asleep or something, you know, and I forget <laughs> to turn it off. <laughs> She's like <laughs> sitting on the couch, watching basketball, <laughs> watching like basketball replays, yeah. eating trashy chips. <laughs> you know, I mean... Which uh, is the new uh, Pulp Pantry, by the way. The new name of mm-hmm. the new name of Pulp yeah. Pantry. She's rebranded it, Caitlin Mogentail or Mogentali, or maybe that Ogentel is How silent. It's just Caitlin <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm, for the chips. But she's rebranding to Trashy, and I, Jackie's just sitting on the couch, garbage mouthing these chips, and she's forgetting to do her job. Yeah. <laughs> Let's come full circle here for, April for everyone's 26th. benefit. Yes, April twenty sixth. Early registration for BevNet Live Summer 2024 is ending. And uh, it's but your last chance to save how much money, Jackie? At least $100 per ticket. So $100 even more if you're an insider. Yes. That is a, possibly a train ticket, a seat upgrade, a dinner. So if you're going to come, why not sign up now? And if you're not going to come, I'm not sure why you wouldn't be coming because this is going to be the event of the summer. And I, I can pretty much guarantee that at this point. Yeah. And book your travel now. I just booked my flights. I booked my Broadway tickets. You know, you can start saving in multiple ways. What are you, what are you going to see this time? <gasps> Hades Town. Nice. Hades Town? Yeah. It's about hell? <laughs> it is about hell. And the soundtrack's amazing. A musical about hell. Yeah. I love it. I love it's gonna this. Be great. This, is my, this is my dream. <laughs> why am I not going? <laughs> you know why this segue is so perfect? Because Mike opened up his Mies magazine. I and, opened up Mies magazine. And, and no, you were at the perfect and, page. Uh, yeah. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay was. A, no, not, right there. not only is it Gordon Ramsay, it's AI Gordon Ramsay. So this is a. It's kind of like Ray said it was like a magazine. It's more like a coffee table book. Maybe it's somewhere in between, but it's by the. Uh, you can only describe him as um, one of the industry's top creatives. And this is Mike Lee. He describes himself as a writer and designer, but I think of him as much more. His aesthetic, like if you follow this guy on Instagram, he finds like the the coolest stuff. So follow him on Instagram, check out his story, um, and also check out this this uh, Future of Food magazine called Mies. It's got stuff on AI, soil as a service, entrepreneurship, and more. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful book. And Mike, thanks for sending this along. Full disclosure, he sent it to me. So I could take a look at it. I haven't really gotten too much of a chance to dig in yet, but what I have dug into, um, it's it's been fascinating. The future of food. The future of food. So it's not a trend report, so to speak. It's just more of like musings on things that could happen. Mies is spelled M-I-S-E, by the way, on the future of food Mies. Anyway, check it out. There you go. Now, the future of food, I want to say for the last two or three years, has included package design that looks like it has embraced a 70s or 80s aesthetic. Not it looks like it has. It has mm-hmm. embraced a mm-hmm. 70s or mm-hmm. 80s aesthetic. Seems like everything we see these days yeah. has that retro feel. And, you know, you think about a brand like Graza. Graza is like the ultimate example of this. <laughs> there it thing. is, yeah. Now, mm-hmm. I, I pulled these from the sample room. These are their olive oil chips. We've talked about these. We don't need to talk about these anymore. But the logo of Graza just feels like it's that groovy 60s kind of vibe. There are trend aesthetics that, that people follow and and... You know, this is this is just what's hot right now. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. be even more in your face with this kind of stuff. There's this uh, alcohol-free wine that I pulled from the sample room called uh, Tethos. T-E-T-H-O-S. So this, this is a sh- black tea Shiraz. Great liquid, by the way. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. And it, yeah, literally this variety has a Polaroid, uh, uh, an image of a Polaroid camera wow. on the front. And a cassette. Don't and, forget Yeah, the Sauvignon one. Blanc mm-hmm. variety has a cassette tape on the front. So they're really laying it on pretty thick. Alcohol-free, hangover-free, black tea Shiraz. Get in my belly. <laughs> go ahead. There you go. Yeah, I want to try this. Yeah, I mean, people are listening to, you know, CD players again. They're listening to vinyl. Like, that's all recycling themselves. Like Mike was saying, fashion's recycling. Like, what am I wearing right now? It's like ripped jeans and like an acid wash shirt. You're in the 80s right now. You know, <laughs> I have bell bottoms to, you know, when I feel like being in the 70s. I so. am no longer shaming Ray for his use of a VCR. So that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, Ray, it's come it's back around. again. Ray also has laser discs, you guys, because Ooh. he found three laser disc players on the side of the street and also the laser disc i would love to have a laser you know those things are pretty rare 
Laserdisc players. <laughs> I know. Yeah. There's even a more rare, rare type of Laserdisc player where it's it's like, it's a record. It's actually, I think it's made out of vinyl, mm -hmm. but it plays video somehow. Mm -hmm. It's this weird, weird thing. That's, anyway, if anyone has one of those machines and wants to get rid of it, it's in their basement, please let me know. I'll, I'll pay for shipping and handling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also saw in the sample room, this really interesting, actually this was in the... Uh, what do they call it? Fridge upstairs? That oh, was a danger fridge. The danger fridge, yeah. yes. Even though this is not a danger fridge type of beverage, it is called Winio, um, which is a non-alcoholic sparkling rosé. But even this, I mean, I think that uh, the hmm. brand aesthetic looks very throwback and retro. John, what do you know about this one? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, it's a. I think it's, it's wine. A bright, uh. Wine. Uh. Yeah, yeah wine. Uh. Like Udegard. Uh, that's an. O with the slash through it or it's like the O with the umlaut yeah but it's very very minimalist on the front it's a very uh red like cherry red can um yeah very cool that also looks how about not beer on. so not beer is an interesting one for me i feel like that does have some of that retro aesthetic but it, mm -hmm. it i mean it looks like a can of budweiser and it's yeah, intended it to look like that yeah i mean it looks like american lager but it's American sparkling water. That's exactly what it's described as. So not yeah. beer. I'm, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have already seen this on the Twitters, on the Instagrams and stuff. I mean, it's it's very much of that cheeky uh, liquid death kind of mold where they're making fun of, you know, sparkling water and uh, just poking fun at the fact that this is nothing more than what it is just water mm -hmm. just water yeah it's chill yeah and on the side of the can it, it says never a bad time i'm assuming because you're not going to get a hangover from drinking this product and i just like to put my thumb like this covering <laughs> not <laughs> so i look like a real no because then it says beer american sparkling water here. yeah but i wonder if they're gonna get in trouble for that because like budweiser might it looks budweiser ish but mm -hmm. it doesn't look enough what's, like what's there the trouble what, it what looks exactly like it doesn't it look from, exactly from, like it, it does from, not what do you no, i mean you just clearly have colors not. from no it has the same oval uh white front it's got the same chicken on the front <laughs> look tonight instead of having a nice glass of bordeaux or whatever you do just crush a couple of bud heavies and you'll see they do not look the same how about this 90s fruit Fruit snack aesthetic here. Nature's Garden probiotic strawberry. These are called Yogi's. They're excellent. I like them. Yogi's. Oh, it's a yogurt covered. Yogurt is that what covered it is? fruit snack. Hmm. Uh, Eighty calories a pack. Super and tasty. probiotics. Just what we need. Probiotics. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, probiotics. Mm -mm. Let's give it Two a try. billion probiotics. Two, Two billion CFUs. Billion probiotic <laughs> cultures. Oh, pretty tasty. Yeah, these are tasty. They also have a trail mix too. Here you go. Boo. I don't know. I when I'm seeing this stuff, though, I mean, like, I like it. The the package design, and you know, getting back to that for a second, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how much longer this is going to last. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just wondering, you know, for all the stuff that we're seeing, you know, that is intended to be a little differentiated, is intended to appeal to younger consumers, and you know, their embrace of retro aesthetic. Uh, you know what's what's really what's really standing out anymore? I don't think almost anything is because everything kind of looks the same. I mean, this is always the case, though. Is it? It is. There's always trends where you know, I think the majority of brands tend to gravitate towards, and I think now the colors that we're seeing, you know, the design aesthetics, or I don't know. There was a stretch where everything was like green, you know, and now it's like we've got a lot of like, you know yellow orange gold red sort of stuff going on um and i think there was also a stretch where things were trying to look like i don't know kind of tech and like you know lots of straight edges and mm -hmm. now we've gone away from that so but yeah. i think it's usually like it's like a slow boil and then it's very noticeable and obviously that presents an opportunity for brands that don't look that way to stand out right i mean that's kind of how it always works yeah, and I think also it's just who they're targeting. I think the brands that are really going for younger consumers are going with the retro vibe because that's what Gen Z is all about right now and what they're doing, what they're wearing, and what they're consuming. Whereas like brands that are maybe targeting some older, like an older demographic might not be tapping into that. But And then again, it's like, we'll see this and then slowly it will shift and we won't really notice the change like right away, but it just kind of like 
flows into the next trend. Then you've got like the go against the grain art project that just pops in like case or something like that. You know, it mm -hmm. looks like they've got <laughs> the Mr. Do Apple, which I've talked about before. And then, you know, they've got their little yin yang, awesome logo. And it's just like, what, what's going on here? It, it looks a lot different than the rest of the aesthetic you see out there. Also pretty tasty with their, uh, with their ooh, bedazzling <laughs> can. It's a jasmine tea beverage. I, I mean, I think it's a beautiful brand. I think it's a great tasting brand, but I feel like it does very much fit into this mold of, I'm just gonna call it what it is because it's been on the tip of my tongue, these snack shot type products. And, you know, Andrea Hernandez has been following modern package design or contemporary package design for the past four years now. And it seems like when you go onto her site or follow her on Twitter or Instagram, you see a lot of these types of um, label designs, which almost always use like one of four different fonts. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, re they really do. And have this sort of counterculture uh, copy and... Well, there's also just the hierarchy is usually different on these. There's a, you know, it's probably something that somebody with an art degree and less experience in food and beverage put together somebody who's a designer somebody who you know knows a little bit about making something that's eye-catching puts these together and it, and you're also looking a lot of times on snackshot at rev zero packaging so it's like the thing before they actually have a full a full release and so you get a chance to see you know the renders in some cases before somebody's actually put a package before they put something into an actual package or you're seeing like really rev 0.1 that they're trying to get some feedback on too so i like that about i like that about the quote snack shot aesthetic and be, beyond just like the retro like aesthetic too i think brands are like one of the brands you were showcasing are going for more minimalist packaging because there's so much marketing there's so many like messages out there and people and consumers just want to know exactly what it is and what's the function or why should I drink this? And I have mm -hmm. like heel tea right here too. And very minimalist packaging just says exactly what it is, but has like a pop of color. That's like RX bar on a can. <laughs> Yeah, it literally just, you know, says exactly what's in there on the front, says caffeine free, organic, says that it's peppermint and dandelion, which are, you know, people know those as functional ingredients in tea. So I think... What's row water? There, everything's RO water. What is that? Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis. Okay. I, I, I would think it would be capital L, but okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's the new Rohan Ozo. Rohan Ozo sweat. His tears. In a can. <laughs> His tears. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. For your Does he cry? He for your cry. information, it's the main ingredient in most beverages. Gotcha. Mm. Rohan Oza doesn't cry, though. <laughs> He's such a happy dude. <laughs> that is a really random tangent there, but hey. Yeah. Uh, just quickly going back to the what you said about good enough, Mike. You know, mm -hmm. But good enough for the first mover, yes. Yeah. But is it good enough for a mainstream audience? And I think... Probably not yet. Well, a lot of these products we see at your Erewhon's of the world... Um, and then, you know, there's a drop off, pretty significant drop off in terms of where we see these products. Yes. You, they might be available direct to consumer. They might be available on Amazon, mm -hmm. but how do you create a package for the long term that has lasting value beyond those initial independent or, um, you have to listen. Grocers? I mean, that's what social media is all about. You have the chance to, you know, get feedback by putting renders of your packaging out there. You can try a lot of things with, with just, you know, putting the designs out there to try to sell your sell your can. So y do you have to necessarily deliver the exact package that you quote sold? I don't think so. I think all I would like to add to this is also that, you know, package design for every brand is it's an evolution and part of the journey. You know, I think a lot of times entrepreneurs are like, you know, thinking about like their package being this lasting thing, but you know, in reality, the needs of a brand trying to get its foot in the door versus the needs of a brand that's trying to scale or trying to exit are very different things. And I think if you look at, you know, a lot of the brands that do eventually exit relative to where they started out, it's quite different in some cases, like almost unrecognizable. Like I saw on Twitter yesterday, someone posted a picture of a Celsius can from 10 huh. years ago and was talking <laughs> about you know, if you put 10 grand into this company, you'd have, I don't know what it was like $3 million today, but like 
the whole entire, you know, design of Celsius, which 10 years ago was like pretty damn awful. Like can it's just burn calories. It's just this ugly, crazy thing compared to like their beautiful white, like polished, you know, branding of today that looks like a mature brand. Um, and I think, you know, for a lot of brands also like, yes, there's really bad packaging that needs to be fixed. But I think some of the things you're talking about, even with, you know, case, Mike, you know, I mean, these are small things that are not going to make or break that brand. Like what's going to make or break them or certainly like the overall idea and the execution mm -hmm. more than like, you know, the little things on the package, which doesn't mean you shouldn't be pedantic about those. But I think some companies sometimes like over index on, you know, aesthetics is, right. is really mm -hmm. the reason I'm saying that. So, right. When I, and like what you need to choose in the beginning is, are you trying to sell your brand or are you trying to sell like a flavor that someone recognizes? I think those are just two things that you have to ask yourself when you're putting together your label hierarchy. And then, I mean, the other pieces, and Jackie and I talk about this all the time. You don't really decide your, your brand long term. You, you mm -hmm. get to decide it in the beginning, but then who, who picks up on that? I mean, the consumer. And they decide what they're doing with your brand. And if you yeah. listen to them, you adapt to their lifestyle. That and Graza is in. a great example of like a brand that is kind of retro um, aesthetic, but has gone more mainstream is in a lot of retail stores because they do a great job on their social media. Um, people know what the product is. It's very clear, you know, um, and people like the product. It's a quality product. People have to find these products at retailers though. And retailers, um, I'm going to give a lot of praise to uh, Sprouts, which has worked with a lot of uh, early stage emerging brands and brought their products into their stores. I see and hear from founders who are either making small inroads into Sprouts or going store wide, chain wide in Sprouts and really innovative, interesting st uh, brands. Um, I think that route used to be very much Erwan and Foxtrot, right? And Foxtrot, we just learned this morning, is ceasing operations. Now, obviously this is a developing story. We just learned about this news. Um, our, we just mentioned Andrea Hernandez from Snackshot. She uh, broke this news on her site. Um, really don't know too, too much about it, but um, disappointing. Uh, I guess not totally unexpected because Foxtrot and Dom's Market, uh, which is a um, specialty grocery chain based in Chicago, uh, had merged a few months back. And it almost seems like this could have happened. It's just shocking that it, it did actually happen. As I mentioned, this is a developing story. Uh, continue to follow everything that's going on with Foxtrot on BevNet and Nosh. I'm sure there's going to be much more even beyond the date of this recording. Not to end on a bad note. I'll end on a happy note here. Uh, Joy. Yes, I just want to let people know that it's been exciting to see all the folks who have signed up as Taste Radio VIPs. Um, it's really cool that uh, you've joined this community. Uh, we are continuing to create new and fun ways to uh, support this community and offer benefits that are specific to in. Uh, I almost said insiders to VIPs. So. If you are interested in becoming one and haven't yet signed up, it's really easy to do so. Go to tasteradio.com slash VIP. Mm -hmm.